The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate various reading and viewing strategies for comprehension and appreciation, explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning. Learners should be able to identify and explain the purpose, structure and language used in texts. Hello, I'm Becky, and welcome to this series of English lessons. Now, as you've probably guessed, these lessons are going to be about newspapers. Maybe you're thinking, I don't need a whole series of lessons about reading newspapers. And after all, how difficult can it really be to just pick up a newspaper and read it? Well, in some ways, you would be quite right. I'm sure that most of you are quite good at reading the actual words on the pages. But how good are you at reading the ideas and intention behind the words? These are the reading skills that this series will help you to improve. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define active reading, tell the difference between objective and subjective writing, and name some of the sections of a newspaper and comment on their intentions. Because the world is so full of written information, we need to develop a way of working out what is true and what is not. What is a joke and what is serious? What is a fact and what is someone else's opinion? We, we do this quite easily with spoken words. Let me show you what I mean. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Here someone is saying the word hi, but because of the body language, tone and who's involved, it is quite easy to tell that the same word has different meanings. But what about written words? They look the same on paper no matter who's written them. And we also don't have clues like body language and tone of voice to help us guess the meaning. To be able to work out what written words mean, you will need to become an active reader. An active reader evaluates and assesses written messages. Evaluating means working out the value of something. So evaluating a text means working out how important or relevant it is to you. In other words, an active reader is someone who asks themselves these questions. What is the writer trying to say with this piece of writing? How much of this is a fact and how much is opinion? How should I react to this piece of writing? Well, let's have a go at active reading by applying these questions to a headline taken from the sports section. Threshed, Smith guides SA to easy win over India. First of all, what is the writer trying to say? From this, I can work out that the writer is trying to tell me that Graham Smith, the South African cricket captain, led the team to victory over India. How much of this is fact and how much is opinion? Well, the South African cricket team did win, so that's a fact. But whether the win was easy or that India got thrashed is an opinion. How should we react to this? Well, that depends which cricket team you support or whether or not you are actually a cricket fan. If you support the South African team, you may be pleased. If you support the Indian team, you may be upset. And if you're not interested in cricket, you may not care who won or lost. We've just looked at one quick example, 
But a newspaper is a printed document that is actually made up of lots and lots and lots of texts, and each one needs to be read and evaluated in a different way. Let's take a closer look at a paper that you've probably read before, the Sunday Times. The Sunday Times is what is called a weekly. That's because it comes out once a week. It is a nationwide paper, and that means that people all over the country, from Limpopo to Cape Town, are all reading the same paper on the same day. If you have read the Sunday Times before, you will know that there are different sections. This is also true for other newspapers. Think about when there's a newspaper in your house. Which section do you read first? Maybe the sport? Maybe the front page? Maybe you turn straight away to see what's on TV? Which sections of the newspaper do the other people in your house read first? Do they have the same reading patterns as you? Or do they like reading different sections first? Each section of the newspaper requires different reading skills. For example, you look out for facts when you're reading the news on the front page, but you'll expect the magazine section to contain more entertaining articles. Let's look at an easy example of how different texts on the same page require different reading skills. Let's look at this page. We can see that the page has lots happening. There are headlines, subheaders, photographs, articles about different subjects, and adverts. Now let's compare the article and the advert. Do you pay them the same amount of attention? Which one are you more likely to believe? Imagine an advert for a company that said, we are the number one maker of cell phones. And then imagine an article in the newspaper that said, Ringo's is the number one maker of cell phones. We would be more likely to pay attention to and believe the article than the advert. Why do you think this is so? So, why do you think that an active reader would be more likely to believe the article than the advert? I'm more likely to believe an article than an advert. I'm more likely to believe an article because with adverts, they usually tend to make somebody buy something rather than telling them the truth or the fact about a product. Product, they usually hide it until last till you buy the product. Okay, I think that I would believe a um, advertisement more because people are looking stuff for that's real. I mean, if you advertise something, people want to go look for something that they're going to have and that has value. So people should rather advertise something that's real in do, instead of doing false advertising. I think that journalists like to add their own story behind the story, their own spice to things. So I think more adverts are what I would rather believe in a newspaper. When reading an, a newspaper, I'd be more likely to believe the article because they're not trying to convince anyone, they're just reporting the facts and what actually happened, while an advertisement is to try and convince you to buy their product over another one. When reading the newspaper, I'd rather prefer to read an article than an advertisement. In an article, the things are actually based on true facts that have already happened. But in an advertisement, the chances of it being realistic is quite minimal. When reading a newspaper, I would prefer to believe in the article because the journalist research more than the advert advertisement. What these learners have said is true. This means that the articles are more objective than adverts. Let's define the word objective. Objective information is based on facts and is independent from the opinions of the person writing it. The opposite of objective is subjective. Subjective information is based on the opinions, beliefs and feelings of the person who's writing it. Let's look at some statements and decide if they are objective or subjective. When ice melts, it turns to water. That movie was really excellent. There were 100 people at the meeting last night. My boyfriend is the smartest man at his work. Let's take a look at these sentences. Which statements do you think are objective or based on fact? And which ones do you think are subjective or based on opinion? When ice melts, it turns to water. The first sentence is a scientific fact, and we can see with our own eyes that this is true. So, it is objective. That movie was really excellent. The second sentence really depends on the person. I might think that the movie is great, but you, on the other hand, might think that it was boring. 
So because it is based on opinion, we mark it subjective. There were 100 people at the meeting last night. This sentence is objective. As long as we know that we can trust the person who made the statement to have checked and counted the people at the meeting. Now, for the last one, my boyfriend is the smartest man at his work. This sentence is subjective because we know that the writer is talking about her boyfriend. We have to ask ourselves how much is fact and how much is her feelings because she loves her boyfriend. Newspapers have many different types of texts in them and some are more subjective than others. Every piece of writing will have a mixture of both qualities. It's just a question of how much or how little. Here is a diagram to explain what I mean. As you can see, any information will fit somewhere along the line. You'll find statements that are almost totally objective and they belong on this side. Other statements are almost totally subjective, in which case it would be somewhere on that side. The results on the sports pages, the team either won or lost, and so these texts are based on fact. The weather for the day, this will be based on info from the scientists at the weather stations. The timetable for TV programs, don't forget this diagram because we'll discuss it in future lessons. But for now, it's time for today's task. Complete a survey with five people you know by asking them the following questions. How often do you read a newspaper? When do you usually read it? What section of the paper do you read first? What section do you read second? What section do you never read? Put your answers in a table like this and compare what you've discovered with one of your classmates. This will enable you to see what types of articles are the most and least popular with the people that you know. That's all for today. See you next time when we will be evaluating news articles in more detail. But from me, Becky, goodbye.